Evening, I go by lots of names. You have seven counts of stealing NFTs and shall be punished by being sent to Roblox Genshin Impact. Goodbye. No. As for Joseph and Vincent, you shall. After the incident, it appears that I am now in a world of only stone, starting with nothing. It also seems that the physics of this dimension are quite different from the real world, as I can punch pebbles out of the stone without hurting my hands. And I could smash these pebbles back into cobblestone. With this cobble, I was able to create my workbench. And by using my sheer strength, I broke this stone into sticks, and created a hammer purely made out of cobblestone. As you may know, hammers can crush objects, usually leading to the object becoming a new object. The same is true in this world. Stone can be pounded into gravel, and gravel can be reduced to dirt. But wait! Did you hear that? There is a live life in the dirt. How do we get it out, you may ask? We would need a crook. With this crook, I could find surprising objects in the stir. Including but not limited to, saplings. These saplings do not need sunlight or water. Instead they feed off of Steve's working. And there we have it. Full grown wood. But while you might think that these trees only provide wood, these leaves will also be essential for human development. For two reasons. The crook can kidnap worms that have been living in the leaves. By purposely destroying my trees by releasing these worms back into nature, these worms leave behind silk, also known as string. And what's better than one string, is nine string. Enough to make a sieve. By assembling the sieve with the sieve and sieve, I can now filter gravel and other materials into some shiny rocks. But not just gravel. Dirt can be grounded into sand, and sand is turned into dust, which is the final tier. So there's five tiers of smashing stuff. And by sieving gravel, sand or dust, you can get different tours. And not just basic ores such as iron, but other rare ores and weird items and powders. We can smelt them now, but we will come back to these later. But while leaves are good for being consumed by worms, they can also be dried in a crucible to separate the water from them. While water can moisturize the average human, Steve's cells do not need water. But water can be used to moisturize dust blocks instead. The result. Clay. This is where things get real. Now introducing, the smeltery, which requires bricks from clay. The smeltery is basically a furnace but 10 times convalescent or and 10 times massiver. Instead of using precious fuel, it uses lava to smelt stuff. Double the output as the noob furnace, which is why we don't use the furnace to smelt anything. But did I say smelt? I meant melt. With this you can melt anything into molten anything and cast it into any shape you want. So obviously the smeltery is our next goal. But first it was time to make improvements to our infrastructure. Instead of having to wait until the heat death of the universe just for water because of how slow it was, we could make an infinite water source. And why use a normal hammer when we can use the compressed hammer? If we do the math, the compressed hammer is 9 times more efficient. And why use a string mesh when we can cover it in flint to make the mesh V2? which makes new items available for sieving. And we got bone meal from going through dust. Mixing clay and bone meal makes this. Seven of these in a U shape make a crucible. By putting a heat source under it, it can melt stone into lava. With this lava and water, we can make a cobblestone generator. But not that type. We're talking about this mini cobblestone generator that automatically outputs cobblestone. So we can say goodbye to manually mining cobblestone. With this stone, it took a bit of crushing to get all of the clay, sand and gravel we would need for the smeltery, and after several other steps, the smeltery was ours. Keep in mind that so far, everything you see here originated from just stone. But what now? 
It was time to get all the other 100 types of resources we would need to progress. And while sieving and smelting would be useful, there is a new type of resource. Animals. But where are the animals? We would need to magically lure them out of the stone. And this would require a bait and trap. This aforementioned bait would come from string and apples from the leaves we destroyed earlier, and now we just wait. Spoiler alert! The trap doesn't work without grass. I then spent several days researching and trying to get grass in this cave when I accidentally got grass seeds while sieving dirt. But anyways back to getting resources. Except sieving was getting boring. So I used a better version known as the heavy siever. Which is 9 times more efficienter. It is the efficientiest. By mass producing cobblestone and mass crushing and mass sieving it, I was now drowning in mass ores. But ores are no use if they aren't smelted. It was time to melt them and cast them into ingots with a completed smeltery. In order to cast stuff, we would need a mold. By placing an object on the casting table and pouring molten gold on it, you will create a mold that is the shape of the object. In this case, an ingot. I can then use the smeltery to melt stone into molten stone, and cast them into more seared ingots into more smeltery stuff. Now we will do the same but with metal. But wait! By melting different metals at once, these molten materials can mix to make alloys. And with a mixture of two-thirds iron and one-third nickel, I made, inver. This was a good material to make a hammer out of, because of this feature. So here's the plan. I am going to mine out a big 50 block long hallway and leave it dark. Then I wait here for mobs to spawn there. And we were going to go hard on these mobs. But this was a terrible idea. The difficulty was hard. And these mobs were super buff. Plus I was too lazy to make armor. So we would need, a sword, a shield, and a bucket of lava. In case I got overwhelmed by mobs, I would place the lava and drown them all out. This was especially useful when it came to overpowered zombies that I didn't feel like fighting. However some mobs were too quick for my lava stand. And as if baby zombies weren't enough, we now had baby skeletons. But after a while of mob grinding, I got some decent loot, including bones for more bone meal. After all this fighting, Steve got a little hungry. And the only food source we had were apples, rotten flesh, and zombie brains, which I will be eating throughout most of the playthrough. It also appears that I got an epic loot crate. Which was not epic at all, because I don't even know what this is. Back at the base, I was sowing dirt, and in this dirt were several different crops, including potatoes and beetroot. With this bone meal and the seeds obtained from sowing dirt, we now had a decent crop farm. Just kidding. We only needed wheat, for the next part. While I was doing all this stuff, the trap had trapped some chickens and apparently it became an egg. Which could become a chicken. But let's do the math. If we multiply the chances of getting a chicken from throwing eggs times 1, we get 1 out of 16. But we have a 1 out of 1, aka 100% chance, of hatching a chicken by putting an egg in a nest. This nest needs 27 wheat. Which needs a rather considerably medium amount of bone meal to grow. To get that much bone meal, we need a better mob farm than just a hallway. So I made a few improvements to the aforementioned mob farm. By turning this wall into a trap which leads to a mob grinder, these clueless mobs could not fight back. Not to mention these guys kept dropping surprise mechanic boxes, so if you see random things popping up in my inventory, such as 4 gold ingots, it will be from loot boxes. But as I was using my bare hands to turn bone into bone meal, I had a sudden realization. By making a crusher and using it to stomp on bones, I could double my annual bone meal production. And now that I was drowning in bone meal, we could raise the funds needed to make a nest. But that is half the journey. After my nested egg hatched and grew into an adult chicken, I would need to make a roost to store it. And everything chicken related needs even more wheat. Which we did not have yet. In the meantime though, I MLG trapped this chicken and let it lay eggs for the rest of eternity, so we could get more chickens. We would need a lot later on. On the quest to grow more wheat, I became desperate. And I went too far into the cave looking for skeletons. 
As a result, I was ambushed by Creeper Special Forces and was nearly assassinated in the following gas explosion, leaving me at half a heart. But it was worth it. The quest for the roost was over. The chicken now had a place to lay whatever it wanted. But wait, you might be saying out loud at the screen. These chickens are so useless and only make feathers. The thing is, I can breed chickens together for a chance for a mutation to happen. This may lead to chickens being born that lay snow instead of eggs. There were about 15 different resource chickens to obtain and the final tier will be extremely important. But we are forgetting something. While these chickens were cool and all, there is another type of resource we need. These chickens created solid materials, but cows could be milked for liquids. Not just milk though. But there are about 50 different other cows in the game, and each one can be milked for a specific liquid. Just like chickens, each are obtained by breeding two cows together from a lower tier, all starting with this guy. So how do we give birth to this guy? By cooking meat obtained from the trap and drying it to make leather, and pouring some molten stone into a bucket, and combining everything, I created the molten stone cow. And we could milk it for the delicious molten stone. Or we can do something cooler with it. By making a lava cow and breeding it with our pre-existing stone cow, it gave birth to a molten coal cow. Are you seeing a theme here? You can breed nearly any living thing. While the tier 1 cows are milk, lava, water and molten stone, the tier 1 chickens are just different colors. Then we just go hard on the breeding from there. But how do we get color in the first place? in this boring stone world. It was time to upgrade from a flint mesh to the iron mesh. With this we can now find basically every vanilla ore, and other things. Including glowstone, emeralds, diamonds, redstone, and lapis. And with that we can get the final tier of mesh. The diamond mesh. By using this mesh, I was now richer than Elon Musk, and we had materials we could use to make colored eggs. But after all this resource production, we had no room to keep all our riches. And the smeltery was going too slow to smelt the aforementioned riches. So as the old saying goes, we should upgrade the smeltery so we can smelt a bajillion ingots at once. The bigger, the better. I then used this redstone timer I found in the loot crate to send a signal next to the smeltery output every picosecond. I then put a hopper and chest below the casting area. So we were now making ingots automatically. Then I just dumped every ore I had in there. Which went terribly wrong. Because if you randomly put two or more different types of ores in there, you will make alloys on accident. And this led to a lot of wasted items. Other than that we had a multitude of spare metals. As for the materials I couldn't smelt, I used them to obtain the blue, red, and yellow egg, and I breeded them in this box thingy. Blue chicken plus wood chicken makes snow chicken. Snow chicken and yellow chicken make clay chicken. And we were working on the slime chicken. After getting enough leather to make the water and lava cows, I began making the tier 2 and 3 cows. Disclaimer. Most of these cows are useless and are only a stepping stone to get higher tier cows. Anyways. These cows had a cool down on breeding, of 5 minutes so I would have to wait for them while they wandered around. But when they felt like breeding, water and lava cows give birth to obsidian cows. Stone and water cows make clay. Clay and coal make iron. But sometimes, these breeding experiments go wrong, causing me to make a cow I already have. So I executed them. Meanwhile, there was this peculiar object I found while sewing through gravel. The grain of infinity. With this, I can begin making machines. And since we had quite a few basic materials from the smelting thingy, we could begin industrializing. But not so fast. We would need power. How do we get power? I enslaved my lava cow to stand here and produce lava. And using this donut shaped generator I made, I turned the lava into energy. This energy is stored in the self explanatory energy storage, and by using lead wires, I can transfer energy anywhere. Now for the first machine. The alloy smelter, which is obtained from the infinity grains I got earlier. Now instead of using the smeltery to create alloys very haphazardly, I could now use this more convenient alloy method. 
Now I only create alloys when I feel like it. As I got more cows, the base got more chaotic. And some of them wandered right into the mob farm. I caught my water cow associating with some zombies and a creeper. I had to go on a rescue mission, but that would probably lead to all the mobs escaping. But I do not care. I proceeded to capture this cow, leading to a near explosion. Speaking of which, I completely forgot I had a mob farm and I didn't clear it out, leading to the entire population of Europe being stuck in the trap. I attempted to destroy them with my lava, but that set about two creepers on fire, leading to a SCP containment failure. I was out of here. But I was overreacting. Because it was only two zombies. So I just assassinated them and unexploded the trap. Anyways, with these cows banned from traveling out of the base, it was time to obtain the normal cow. Ironically, we had every type of cow except the normal type, and the normal type can only be obtained by buying it from the market. The market is basically one emerald, four wool and four wood that basically turns into a market. I then traded with whoever was inside the market. And we agreed on nine emeralds for a cow. Now that we had all four basic cows, we can breed anything we want. Starting with using the water cow and normal cow to make the slime cow. And unlike these other cows, the slime cow will be useful for reasons I will explain later. I made the second machine, known as the induction smelter. But wait. This is basically the same thing as the alloy smelter but renamed in a fancy way. The difference is that it is the only way to create the machine presses, needed to create our first circuits. But that's far ahead of us so I was going to place it and not use it for the next few hours. We had more pressing matters. Including, enchanting. This mob farm did not make experience fast enough. And we needed quite some XP to get juicy enchants that would be useful. Luckily, experience can be milked from cows. We just need to do the following breeding iron and coal cows into steel, having the coal cow remarry to its new child to make dark steel cows. While this was fun and all, I found a glitch that allows you to skip waiting for cows to grow in the breeding timer. If you use the cow want to turn cows into irons and respawn them, they forget their age and marriage status. But should we really abuse a glitch for our own benefit? The answer is yes. Obsidian cows and dark steel cows make end steel cows. Making the steel cow remarry to its new grandchild creates ender pearl cows. Iron and obsidian breed gold. Gold and ender pearls create liquid XP. By milking the liquid XP guy and dumping it into a tank, and drinking it straight from the tank, you become more experienced. Now that we were at tier 5 cows, I fired all the tier 1 cows that had run out of breeding possibilities. And we now had enough levels to use an enchanting table. But there is a better way, known simply as the enchanter. A complicated machine. Which would need products from other machines. First we make a pulverizer and crush coal into coal powder. Then we use the alloy smelter to make steel from that. Crushing obsidian and smelting it with steel creates dark alloy. The base of the enchanter. And the rest is simple. So the enchanter can create any specific enchantment book you want if you give the right materials, and it doesn't need to be surrounded by bookshelves. This will be very useful later. Since we still had lots of materials, it was time to continue industrializing. Because we couldn't visit the nether, we would have to use chickens to obtain nether resources. And I happened to have 8 nether quartz chickens from failed breeding experiments. So I enslaved them for free quartz. But that isn't the only quartz in town. There is certain quartz hiding in normal sand, with some of it being charged. By mixing these charged ones, the quartz, and redstone in water, you get fluix. A material that will be very important as well. The slime I got from a few days ago would also be useful, for sticky pistons. An ingredient for the delicious inscriber, which presses materials into circuit parts into circuits. This and the fluix lead up to the Mii system. One of the greatest mysteries of mankind is what the Mii stands for, but it is the greatest unmystery that the Mii system is the usefulest tool in the game. You can store nearly anything in it. It has a Google search engine for all your stored items. And it can automatically craft stuff for you. 
You can say goodbye to these ugly unorganized chests and doing anything manually. There is one problem. The presses needed are expensive to get. Even with the current gaming setup. This is where the enchantment table stuff comes in. There exists an enchant known as Civ Fortune. Which is fortune, but on a sieve. But to get it you will need 270 end stone. The issue is we were not in the end. End stone without end is stone. So how do we get end stone with the end in it? It wouldn't be so easy. And I was getting tired of explaining everything I did so here is a time lapse. There you have it. Civ Fortune. I was not disappointed by the newly improved Civ. And as for the end stone dimension a few hundred blocks above us, we would revisit it later, for more interesting loot. Now that we had 4 full metal blocks thanks to the Civ V3, we got all 4 presses. Now it was time to begin making the Mi system. First I printed out some circuits and combined them to make processors. I then used the processors to make more processors, by upgrading the inscriber for faster processing speed. The next thing we shall do with circuits is make a bunch of hard drives, a storage for the hard drives, the Mi system controller, some computer cables, and a computer screen. After building the new gaming PC and putting on the screen, I could now do one of the most satisfying things in any playthrough. Taking everything out of these chests and shoving it into the system through this screen. How this works is that items in this system are stored as data in the hard drives, so these hard drives are kinda like chests. And everything stored in these drives can be accessed through the screen. Now that we had a good storage system, it was time to continue industrializing. Now you may be wondering, what's the point of all this industrialization? What goal are we working for? I will be keeping it a secret for now. But just know that we had lots of things to do. Speaking of things. The amount of things on planet earth is 100 quadrillion. But the amount of things subscribed to me is 300,000. Can you please surpass the amount of things on earth in sub count? Thank you. Anyways back to what I was talking about. The next thing I shall do is make a nuclear reactor. With the amount of machines I was running. This enslaved cow was simply not energetic enough. And even 100 lava cows could not compare to the nuclear reactor. So it is time for the greatest part of the playthrough. Fully customizable nuclear reactors. They come in all shapes and sizes. And on the inside are infinitely many different core designs. But which one was the most efficient and resource friendly? I did a bit of thinking. And I hatched a plan. We would make a 7x7x7 reactor, and on the inside were 5 reactor rods that were cooled by graphite and molten redstone. And for fuel, we would only need a few ingots of uranium from Sylvan sand. To get all the reactor materials, I would need to crush and sieve a total of nearly 3000 cobblestone. But that was easy. I spent the next two days going through a thousand dust, a thousand gravel, and sand and dumping all of the ores into the smeltery, which had been expanded recently to prepare for this. Next we used some iron, gold, redstone, and coal to make the reactor parts. This would take a bit of processing, 
But don't worry about all these different parts we need. They are easily obtained with just a bit of processing of the ores we have. There is just one problem. These processing machines were as slow as the Hubble expansion of space-time. Luckily, these machines could be upgraded to higher tiers. And with these tiers, come new upgrade slots. And these aforementioned upgrades include, all of these. But this was the best of the these. And all this was also pretty cheap. And worth it. While the reactor parts were being manufactured, I was going to clear out space for the reactor. And what better place to put it, than right here. Next I began building. A 7x7x7 7 7 7 cube on the outside. 5 rods in the center. Some graphite blocks. And molten redstone coolant. Now for the question everyone keeps asking even though they know the answer is already no. Can this reactor explode? The answer is no. So we're safe from any form of nuclear reactor stupidity. After booting up the reactor, the entire power grid was overloaded with energy. But oh well. I would no longer have to gain resources manually. With this energy I could create an auto-sieving setup. Here's how it works. First we make an auto-smasher and an auto-heavy siever. Then we connect the cobble gen to the smasher to an automatic crafting table to compress blocks for the heavy siever. While I let this run, we still had some leftover materials from making the reactor. And you know what this means. Even more machines. So basically over the next several days I use this time to automate more stuff in my base. First we shall make the object known as the interface, which is basically an extension of the ME system. Anything you put in it will be sent to the system if it's connected. So I attached it to the auto sieve to pipe in all the juicy ore chunks. Next up. Plastic. Plastic is usually obtained from oil in real life but we do not have oil. But we have trees. By making a tree fluent extractor and latex producer. We can turn trees into rubber and do plastic. With this plastic, I made the self-explanatory mob slaughterer. Instead of giving normal mob loot when it annihilates stuff. It only gives liquid meat. And yes, it can be put in a bucket. And when you put the meat in you, you get instantly full. So we can say goodbye to eating rotten flesh. Another thing that can be done with this plastic, is to make the seriously overpowered stone work factory. The reason it's called a factory is that it creates stone instantly and can smelt, hammer, and craft, at a mind-boggling speed, all in one machine. So we can say goodbye to our enslaved automatic hammer guy. And say hello to even more resources. But while making all these new machines, it was getting tiring to make everything manually. Now introducing, auto crafting. A feature of the ME system. Here's how it works. First we will make some molecular assemblers, blank patterns, processing units, and more inscribers since we need processors galore. Next I attached ME interfaces to every machine we wanted to automate. The interface can export items into machines and take the output. The patterns describe what to input and what to expect for the output, and once you put it in the interface next to the machine, you can now order that item to be made. The molecular assembler is a machine that is basically a crafting table. And the processing unit is the CPU to handle all the auto crafting. With all of this set up, mass production was possible. Instead of just one stone work factory, why not six? And instead of just sieving dust, we now had a processing line for sieving sand and gravel. And we were now automatically getting every single type of metal chunk we would need. However, ore chunks on their own are useless. And at this point, even the massive smeltery was becoming too slow for making materials. So how do we automatically turn them into ingots a faster way? Allow me to show you my new plan. And new automatic crafter to compress ore chunks from the sieves. Yet another stonework factory for making sand. A new induction smelter connected to the sand maker and the ore chunk thingy. Behold. The new most efficient way to smelt ingots. All of this leads up to the next phase of the game. Now that we had lots of iron ingots. It was time to move on to a higher tier of machines, which would need a new material, steel. To accomplish steel, we will begin by making the metal blah 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 infusion, which is basically an alloy smelter but it sounds cool, 
and we can use this to inject coal into iron. Doing this twice gives steel dust, which can be smelted into ingots. Now we just repeat the last three steps but faster. By using this thingy called the enrichment chamber to turn coal into a fancier sounding coal, steel was ten times more cost efficient to get. And obviously this machine was upgradable up to ten times faster. Speaking of upgrade, around this time I was overall upgrading everything in my base. Upgrading speed upgrades. Upgrading the storage system for more space. Upgrading the alloy smelter so I can install an upgrade that can be upgraded. And you get the point. But it was time for the ultimate upgrade. The upgrade to end all upgrades. The resonant kit. And not just one, but I was going to mass produce them. Here's how. First I got some platinum from some molten platinum cows. Then, I made some water pumps. An igneous extruder which automatically makes obsidian from the water pumps and lava from the crucible. An XP drain. A glacial precipitator to make snow. A fluid transposer to make magic hoogly doogly from XP snow. All leading up, to the resonant upgrade kit. And I was going to use it, on the ore smelter. With the completely maxed out ore smelter, my ore processing chain was done. And I now own thousands of ingots, ready for use. And it was time for phase 3.681 of my plan. While it may seem that overpowered setups like this take the survival out of this survival challenge, things were about to get a lot harder. You may remember the drop of evil I got from killing with our skeletons. As it turns out I had a spare one. And by using it on an area of dirt, you get corrupted land. Similar to terraria corruption. This will lead to a rather uncanny thing happening, known as super buff mob spawning at a ridiculously fast rate which will probably kill me. And this was necessary to get further in the game. You see, after the incident, I was planning to break back into the earth dimension by making some sort of portal. But after building this entire factory, almost entirely from just stone, I realized that this stone dimension was way better than earth. It was all mine. And I have big plans for my new world. Just wait and see.